First thing I said when I walked in was, oh my god, I'm in love, actually. Oh, what so is it? Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah just oh, my love. love. Jump in. Yeah, Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Bronte and Duty joining Sapna and I, and we are so excited to have you guys back on the sofa. How are you doing? Yeah, you're so good. Okay. <laughs> it's good to why be Why did that sound sarcastic? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why that sounded so sarcastic. So so <laughs> Bronte, you're bringing the colour this morning. I am. Oh, I thought I'm blending in with the sofa. Oh, I love, love it. it. Love and you're it. both wearing stripes. We're I know. feeling springy here. Yeah. Do you know what? We've got to do it. It's grey outside. Yeah. I mean, should we just go through our outfits now that we're talking about it? Let's mm -hmm. do it. What so, are these are from Copenhagen. <gasps> yeah. Uh, Mads Nagard. Okay. <laughs> so it's gonna be like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They like all the Danish girlies wear them. So and when cool. I went to Copenhagen, I was like, that color, that color, that color, that color. Mm. Primark. I've seen this I've on seen TikTok. This. Is yeah. this the same as the grey? The the yes. one. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. the one. Cotton on, Adidas. Lovely. Love it. And I love the little pink bows you've got on your hair as yeah, well. Always. Those, I like, can't go out without bows at the moment. I just It just adds to the outfit. Really like, and your nails, we were talking about a second ago. They yeah. look so sick. Where do you get them you. done? Absolute Joy Spa in Clapham Junction. Love that. They're great. They're really nice. Them. For the people listening, do you want to like, oh, describe? Oh yeah, so them? they're kind of, I was about to say they look like splashes of water, <laughs> but they're like blue flowers. Flower. Flower. Would you say flowers? Yeah, I would say they're flowers. Yeah, yeah, flowers. Yeah. With like a white base, like a like a cloudy, milky base. Lovely. Lovely. Duty, what are you oh, wearing today? Me. <laughs> I am wearing a picante like knit which I love. It's like the so first good. thing I bought from them and I'm literally obsessed with it. I've just got a really oversized ASOS tee underneath. My trousers are like a striped, I think they're men's pajamas from H&M. And then I have the Adidas trainers on as well, the brown with like the little yellow stripes that I'm obsessed with. Love, love those. So nice. And they're linen, they look so comfy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I mean that linen. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So nice. Sap, what are you wearing today? I, this is not actually part of the outfit. I'm just freezing. But I'm wearing... Ooh, woo, oh, woo. Woo. I'm wearing this Damps and Madder... Is it a shirt? I guess it is a shirt. Yeah. It's like a cross-stitch, really dark denim shirt with their little logo on it. How sweet is that? Yeah, that's really cute. So like fun. a little pop of red. Yeah. Oh. And then these are just um, Zara Taylor trousers and my Salomons because it's really wet and gross outside. So got to wear the Salomons. Says, what are you wearing? Um, I've got my cos tailored trousers on, a cotton on bomber, just a basic Zara tee, and my Duke and Dexters, which I'm wearing to absolute death. So um, but Bronte, we saw you in Copenhagen. What are your recs? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's hot on everyone's yeah. travel yeah. list this year. It is, isn't it? I feel like everyone's there. I went once in December, freezing, minus six, snowing. No, thank you. And then mm. went back a couple of weeks ago, still freezing, <laughs> rain, great. Were you there for Fashion Week? No, just after. Okay. But it was... It's just so lovely. Like I can't wait to go back in summer for the third time. But I feel like I need to experience summer. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I really. I would love like to. Colourful yeah. streets. It's like a very outdoorsy place. Although I just go for the shopping. Like the shopping is. Exactly. No, we need to go for I the weekend. Know. Yeah, I, I know. Want I do. Really just twenty four hours. Like, it's really, it's really cheap, and like the flights are really, really? cheap in April yeah. at the moment. I'm considering. And going you must in April. stay in. I don't know about you guys, but we stayed in Villa Copenhagen. So oh, such good value, I did see and that. the pastries they have downstairs mm. in the morning are oh, amazing. Really I would say Apotec fifty seven yes. for breakfast. Yes. Oh. Oh my god, I want to Amazing. go so badly. Like the breakfast play. Get there early though. Yeah, get there early. Yeah. What is like a Copenhagen food? Like what's like a traditional? Well, pastries. Is it pastries? Also, a boiled eggs, yeah. and which I I know it's a bit rogue for some people, but I, I love boiled eggs. Love, I love a boiled egg. I love boiled eggs. Boiled egg, like um, dippy eggs. Di like like dippy yeah. eggs with rye bread. Yeah, oh, rye bread. Yeah. nice cheese. Or like yeah. salmon and butter. stuff. Is that whipped mm. butter? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Like a breakfast plate, and they kind of have it very simple. Yes. It's very like easy. Yeah, it's amazing. Bottega barley for um, yes. dinner. That was so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got to go to the Ganny Outlet store. I mean, it's yeah. just amazing. Yeah. The 50% it's... off Ganny. Oh my God. Isn't Hay oh, there as well? Hay is yeah. there. Yeah. Hay House, gorgeous. <gasps> gorgeous, gorgeous. But you've got to go, If you, I think you've got to take girlfriends. If you're going there, Yeah. I don't know. This is going... the thing, like my boyfriend wants to go and I was like, oh, D didn't think you'd be up for that, babe. <laughs> was kind of hoping to go with the girl. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite hard to call it shopping that shopping yeah. 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 Unless, no, your partner's up for that. Yeah. Which, yeah. I would say boy, B-O-I-I. The clothes in there are I didn't go there. Stunning, like wide leg, like lovely stripy trousers, big oversized jumpers, shirts, nice. really nice. And like pricing wise, if you're going I to was gonna and say, stuff, is it better? It do you know what? It's expensive out there. So if you can make your accommodation as cheap as possible yeah. and get as mm -hmm. good value for your accommodation, then it, you know, leaves you a bit more room for spending money. But yeah. it is sort of like London. Yeah. I'd say slightly more expensive. Yeah, I would say. I'd say if you're going with like a group though, like more than two, you can actually get Airbnbs for not that mm -hmm. bad. Like if you're going idea. for like groups of like four 
four to six, which is obviously quite big. But I think the Airbnb is then at like quite good value. You can mm, get them for like a yeah. hundred per yeah. person. And you are just splitting the bill between more people. Yeah, yeah it's just... very true. Um, um, but oh my god, Bronte, you've also been to Downing Street recently. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. we need to hear Congrats. about this. Firstly, Thank Thank you. can you so give sick. us the whole lowdown from like when you got asked to the whole yeah. thing? So, no, it's hilarious because the first thing I said when I walked in was, oh my god, I'm in love actually. <laughs> and they literally looked at me like, yeah, that's the first thing she says as she walks into town. Yeah. <laughs> but it literally looked, they didn't film it in there, but it was like based on it, obviously. What is it? Yeah, what is that song that he oh, dances to? What is it? It's because it's going to be Um Jump. Yeah, jump. Yeah, I was about to break into that. We like walked past up the stairs, like the famous stairs with all like the prime ministers like on, um, like hanging up with signed Aww. photos. And then we went past a door and they were like, and um, this is the MP's office. And I was like, okay. Rishi, you're right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, they, they sent an email just being like, we want to invite you to 10 down. And she was like, this is, this is a joke. This is not real. I sent it to my manager like, I don't, I think this is, it's a joke. It's spam. And then, yeah, I had a meeting with them and then I got a formal invite. I had to and walk was, in. What was the theme? Because ha they had a few people, young, yeah. entrepreneurial. What was the... So it was to do with what? like loneliness within 16 to 24 year olds. They did a study um, within the country and they found that it was the loneliest group, wow. even like compared to like the older generation. They said that 16 to 24 year olds don't talk about being lonely um, and that they want to like home in on that and try and regulate it and like do something to help it. Mm -hmm. And the like campaign that they've done is amazing. Like when they showed it to us, I was like, wow, like they've really like nailed it. Um, and they had amazing people there. Like the people that I met were just incredible. And like, we all spoke in a, like a round round table discussion about like loneliness and everything like that. And so, and you spoke about, did you get, get to speak who, about Girls yeah. Who? And yeah, cause it's like the whole, one of the whole reasons yeah. I started Girls Who. So to be there, like to talk about that was, like amazing yeah, yeah it feels it was, so fitting yeah to be there. definitely Aww. but the whole experience was just mad i was like i'm i'm on a film set like this is this <gasps> and, is amazing i mean was that on your 2024 bucket not bucket at all wasn't even on, <laughs> on your mind do you know what i went past i did like a christmas lights open bus tour and i went past 10 down street and i said to my boyfriend like, i'd love to go in there like did i would you? absolutely i don't know how but i just really would love yeah. to go in like do they do tours and i remember googling like tours of 10 down street and then like that two months later i get an email that. being like we want to invite you i was like here we go Thank you, I spoke that into existence. Oh my God, did you meet the cat? I met the cat. <laughs> as soon as I walked in, guys, as soon as I walked in. What an on My mum was like, you need to find the cat. And I was like, okay, I'll find the cat. And he was sitting right there. Oh, You're not allowed so... to like stroke him or touch him, oh, but he was just there, he's a bit shame. grumpy. Oh, fair, I mean, it is a And cat. how is Girls Who? Can you give us a bit of an update? You're, it's sort yeah. of growing tenfold. And... Yes, we've got lots going on with Girls Who Travel. Mm. We've just launched a Japan trip and a <gasps> Europe trip. When? Um, so we've got Japan coming up in June, July and August. And then we've got Europe trip in August, but we're launching two more dates because it's got like a 250 wow. wait list. And, and I'm Europe like, meaning like whereabouts? So we're doing interrailing. Fun. Yes, yeah, so we're starting God, I did that when I was 18. Yes, yeah. I did that. That's why I wanted to do it because I was like, do you know what? Like, I just, I love interrailing and I loved like seeing Europe like that when I was yeah. younger. So yeah, we're doing Budapest, Lake Bled, Milan, Venice, in Italy. Wow, oh, God, yeah. just so actually great. perfect for the time you're going because yeah. sun and beautiful yeah. weather. And, and also water. people are finishing like uni and like that's yeah. such a nice time School, for like. Yeah. Yeah, and also just school, a nice yeah. way to see Europe in like 10 days. Mm. So nice. So great. Oh, well, well very done. Exciting. Well, we're very proud. We're all Thank you. watching from the sidelines. Thank like you. <laughs> We are going to talk a little bit more about like careers and have a bit of a deep dive later on. Yeah. But should we get into the hot list for now? Yes, there's Let's lots been going on. There is. Oh my God. We were, so Duty, you actually sent this to us. Oh yeah. But there's this thing going on on TikTok. I feel like we're a bit out of date with it. People probably already know about it, but there's this woman who's essentially going through like her entire breakup on TikTok and like there's like a 20 part series in depth oh, no, talking about it. It's 52 out. parts. Is it 50, no, what? I it's couldn't, 52 I couldn't parts, even know 10 minute a part. No, it's a working day. day. It's an eight hour it's working mad. day. Is it live? Is she live and direct from the breakup? Like, she did it's it not live, she's right. just recording it and then yeah. just posting, but it's not like edited. So she's no. just speaking into the camera and then she's just so posting. So can you give us like a synopsis? Yeah, because I've only watched one or two. So I wish I could, but I'm only on eight. So, but I've heard like around 34, 35. It's really mental. It really kicks off, right? But yeah. Yeah, the thing is that you can't, obviously with the TikTok app, you obviously can't watch it in the background. So like when you're watching it, you have to really just sit and mm. commit your time to it. You can't look at anything else. But effectively, I haven't gotten to anything that crazy yet. Mm. Like she's just kind of lost her first house that right. he just completely lied about. But she's oh. basically been married to this absolute- Dickhead. Yeah, pathological no. liar. This and it's just- therapy for her. 
yeah, I guess so. I guess she's yeah, like, I mean, that TikTok out. is pushing long form videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's driving. True. True. Yeah, no, she is. I remember when I went back on like the app, she was saying that she's like finally been able to go to, I think it's like London and Paris. Cause obviously these videos have done so well. She's, she's getting sorry. like, yeah, yeah, she is. Right, okay. So she's obviously getting like commission, I guess, yeah. her like yeah, yeah. video. And they've oh, got oh, millions and millions of views. So she's like, oh, I've finally been able to go to like London or Paris. I've been on my bucket list for ages. And I was like, Good for you. Yeah, turning yeah. a negative or into you. a positive. We love that. But she's re- she's a really good storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. For me, she goes into a lot of detail. I love detail. I think you'd be very good at this yeah, storytelling. I agree. Mm. I just don't think I have anything that interesting but you know to what? like share. But I could sell it. Maybe yeah. I could sell it. I feel like you don't speak enough on your um, channels. Yeah, like to really. the camera. I think you I need do to. sometimes think that maybe I'll maybe I'll try. Yeah, sometimes I get shy. I did try you, to do like, you, shy. Yeah, but I get shy when I'm by, my, when I'm by myself. Like, yeah, I, know I, I did something mean. the other day, but it was just like, it's going to come out soon, but I did like a vlog like around London, mm-hmm. like a big walking Fun. like vlog. Oh, cool. And I was trying to talk a bit more and I went by myself and it was the first time I'd done something well done. fully by yeah. myself. And I was a bit like, <laughs> so guys, no. <laughs> but there's that new vlogging camera that's like tiny and everyone's Lips using it to like disguise that vlog. Fashion it's lab. very cool it's like this big really cool. I met yeah. someone at the weekend who had it it's brilliant yeah. and the export is so quick yeah, so I love that really yeah. if you don't want like to get the big old camera with yeah. one yeah. thing, it's quite nice it's just tiny up. I didn't because yeah. when she was um, Liv's got it she brought it to an event but she was calling it like a I think it is a gimbal, gimbal. Tech, yeah. but yeah. I pictured it as you know, the one that you actually attach your yeah, thing yeah, yeah. onto. I didn't realise the actual camera was that tiny. And you can set it to like track you a yes, little bit. Yes, it moves. So move it moves. with you, which is ideal like when you're by yourself. So, I, I mean, that's quite the investment yeah. after me filming one video. But like... <laughs> I think it'd be good for your travels because you could yeah, fix it onto true. things. Same. But yeah, people, I've seen people use it. Um, people sort of do like cycling content okay. and they put it oh, in And then, so when they move the bike, it goes with them. That's Maybe for your next run club. <gasps> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. idea. Oh you need to tell us how it went. Yeah, yeah, yeah so launch. Shuffle Cup at the weekend. It was such a lovely turnout. There was like 50 girls and guys. Oh, I love that. Really nice mix. Sat, you came down yeah, for coffee at the for end. The end. Oh. Yeah, I did. Let's, let's confirm. I did not do the run. Next one. <laughs> but you know what? I was. I think it's run clubs. Obviously, there are so many. You have. Yeah. You do one, right? Well, I did one. Who, a one-off for did International you? Women's Day. I thought, come on, let's give it a go. Yes. Well, we need to touch on that as yeah. well because the turnout was insane. For that yeah, one. it was amazing. Um, but I guess it's just providing a run club where people don't feel any pressure to run a certain pace. I think running has become such a trend, mm. such oh, a cult yeah. online. Mm. Definitely. And, you know, there's some incredible fitness creators out there that are really inspiring people. But also I think people just want to run and not feel a pressure to run yeah, it out of yeah. pace. So what go, pace did you do? We just did a very easy shuffle pace. Nice. But I think for the next one, we're going to do some split up the pace yeah, groups yeah, yeah. as well. So yes. that'll be fun. It's just but, a nice way to meet people as well. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, most people stayed longer for the coffee at the end, yeah. I think just to meet like-minded just people. Chat. And yeah, so yeah, many yeah. girls came on their own, which was so oh, lovely. Aww. And it's such a great way to meet new people. But yeah, yeah. you had the Pure Sport International Women's Day. Run club, yeah. On Friday that you hosted. Yes. So there was four like female communities that all like, joined together with Pure Sport. So you had this. Gals Who, The Re Club, Millie, Millie, Millie Fit, Fit. Yeah. Celine, she does like the slow running, yeah. um, the slow run club, and then Mindful Strides. Yes. And it was just so lovely. We all kind of just came together and brought all of our communities together and a thousand girls turned up. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, I saw the video. And it was in the dark. You all had pink yeah, on. Yeah, pink socks. <gasps> it was really lovely. Because like, I'm not a runner by any means. Like I, don't, I haven't run a marathon. I haven't run a, a half marathon. I don't like go out and think, right, I'm going to get this pace. Like I just enjoy running. Yeah. Like I'll just go out to clear my head or just mm. to like move my body. So that's kind of what I wanted it to be. I was like, to pure sport, if gals who are going to get involved, if I'm gonna come to the run club, it has to be like a really lovely, like safe open space for yeah. girls that can even walk if they want. Like, yeah. it's just to like chat and make friends and feel like, you know, I've just done a 5K on a Friday evening. Like that was really But how enjoyable. empowering running through the streets of London with a thousand girls. Oh my girls. God, it was so good. And we were like screaming, <laughs> singing along, <laughs> like woo! And everyone was like filming us going past and screaming. And like, Aww. it was so scenic, went past London Eye. Yeah, and like, so oh, it was amazing. Scene. Honestly, it was such a lovely evening. And like, I didn't even realize I was running. So, so cool. I was talking yeah. to so many people. I just, I finished and I was like, oh, lovely. She's done a 6K. Oh, that's so it's sweet. great. What else have we had on the hot list recently? Who saw Greg James yes. do a life I swap? For so the I, I have so seen that. this, but He's very so cute. great. Yeah. So Greg James obviously works for the BBC and he, for the Brits, swapped with a little, it's a couple, isn't it? Yeah, and they're yeah. one of his, um, they're, they're regulars on his breakfast show. So they call up regularly. So I th- they've what? obviously built a relationship that's over so however many months. And that was it. They got engaged. They called in to say, we've just got engaged. Greg James was like, right, for your engagement present, I'm going to swap lives with you. You can have my two Brits tickets and I'll look after your daughter. So he babysat the daughter, did a um, carousel on TikTok being like, they were doing colouring in. 
in. They went to so the park. Sweet. Whilst this couple were having the time of their lives at the Brits. Oh, That's I just so think it's so sweet. adorable. I loved her. I know how wholesome. Who would you like swap with? Oh, I don't know. Oh, no, like a celeb or someone. Do you know what? I think we should do it with one of our LG readers That'd be nice. to come on the pod. Yeah, that would be yeah. such a good That's idea. That's a really good idea. I love that. And then we go to their job. Yeah. yeah. And or we can have a day in the office. Yes. Yeah. Oh my if God. you'd like to do that, let us know. Yeah, yeah make that would be so fun. Oh my God, I hope we get someone who's like a zookeeper or something. I'd love to, oh, I'd love to go to the zoo. No, you'd like someone zoo. that works at Bassey Dog Cat. Yeah, dog yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you'd idea. love that. Yes. Or like a dog walker. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Do you know what, but it'd be really funny if maybe you got like a PT or something. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> a ski and shoe. A laptop <laughs> yeah. down. A laptop down. Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, something else I saw was, do you guys see Ariana Grande's new music video? So she's obviously, yeah. have, she's dropped her album, um, but she released a music video for one of her singles, which is called We Can't Be Friends. And it honestly, it like broke my heart. Really? It's all, I think it's all about, like, that you could interpret it in loads of different ways, but the music video idea was basically, it's a bit like Don't Worry Darling, where you like, so you like plug in and they basically go through your memories with like your loved one and they like delete the memories. So oh. she relives them all oh. and they like delete them in your mind. Oh, so gosh. then when you leave, you're like no longer upset about it, but it's really upset. It's and then like, it's very yeah, black kind mirror. Of. It, it's very black yeah. mirror. It, the way it's shot, everything was so sick. But then there was like the, um, the man, the love interest was Evan Peters from... Yes. Well, he's in loads of stuff, but like yeah. American Horror Story. And didn't he play Dormer? Dormer, Dormer, Dormer. Yeah, Dormer. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I love him. But yeah, it was just, it was I really need to watch that. Let too. me finish this, I'll get yeah. it up. But the song is, itself is really good as well. I think mm. it's just all about, obviously she's gone through this huge like divorce and everything. So God, I think I it's a bit about divorced. that. I know. I still, it's still to this day, I'm just like, yeah. Do you know what I'm excited for? To see her in Wicked, you know, yes. the film. Yes, so excited It's coming out. When's yeah. that coming out? Soon. It's coming out oh, this guys, year. Guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I love, love Wicked. I would love to do a group so chat much. cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. I love Wicked. Although, did you oh hear, okay, this, this, is, this might be too much, but um, there's been like rat infestations in London cinemas. <gasps> No. And people are saying that they've gone to go and grab their popcorn. No, no, no. no and there's no, a rat no. just nibbling. No, or like okay. they felt something coming up and they thought it was 4D. <gasps> and it's the rat coming up. No, honestly, like Southwest London cinemas, guys. Oh, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, no. I can't go. I'm and not, what no. do we think about going to the cinema on our own? Oh, absolutely. I've been really tempted. I've been really tempted this year. I, I've done it. It's I've done it a few times. times. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you? I went to the cinema on Saturday night and I actually thought like, we're not talking. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I could have easily gone on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could have just, I could have just gone on my own. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd that's go to the cinema by myself. I think that's a perfect, like, first step into, like, a solo date night. Yeah. Agreed. Go in your pajamas. Yeah. Hot chocolate. Yeah. I always take a hot chocolate in Oh, the so nice. Ooh. The other thing, which I'm sure loads of you have seen, is the Mbani wedding, mm. which, if you guys don't know who that is, it's, like, one of the richest families. I want to say in India, but I actually think it's even bigger than that. They are just extremely rich. But they're, um... Aren't they worth, like, 160 billion? Oh, something like that. Mad, like crazy wow. crazy money um but so the son has just gotten married and obviously their wedding was happening actually it's not even the wedding yet it's like the pre-wedding pre no. which obviously yeah. as indians we have very long wedding ceremonies but this is like next level on average yeah. how long are the indian wedding ceremonies it really ranges and it depends on your, like religion and what you're doing but like probably over like two weekends wow okay so like minimum oh i'd say wow. um because you have like a the day before or like two days before then the day before and the actual wedding and then something after. Okay. So like maybe four days. Yeah. But yeah, this was like insane levels. But like to show you how rich they are, they had Rihanna at the pre-wedding performance ceremony And situation. they paid her six million. Yeah. Six I was six, yeah, million. I wasn't sure if it was six or yeah. nine, but it's But didn't they mental. get um, the wife's name wrong? She got the wife's name wrong. <gasps> Did she? Yeah, yeah, I didn't the see that. And they were saying, you Refund. know, Rihanna, you've not performed for a decade. You've been paid 6.5 million and you didn't even get the you wife's name right. I don't for a refund. And that, that's what they were saying. They were like, it was a bit disappointing. Oh, shame. I mean, if you oh, see the oh, performance, oh. the performance was pretty good. Was it good? Yeah, she did it. Yeah, she was good. And apparently the, um, I can't remember what airport they were flying into, but normally there's only like 12 flights a day. They had to bring in 150 flights because of the amount of get, uh, guests oh, that yeah. were coming to this wedding. Oh but this gosh. is the sort of thing, it's like everyone in India, like who was famous in Bollywood, the entire Bollywood like wow. actors yeah. guild, I want to say was there. Like They genuinely. had Bill Gates. They had yeah, they had Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. everyone. That's how, like, well, it's that a big is deal. crazy. Um, Riri at yeah. your pre ceremony, I, know. I mean, that would be... Someone else was there as well. Akon. Akon was Oh like my that. god, no, no, no. I can't express how devastated I am that I didn't get Akon tickets. Really? Like, oh, shit. It actually be, makes me sad. Who would be sad. your dream wedding guest performer if you had an artist at your wedding? Oh, I don't know. Well, now it's quite distracting because now all I'm thinking is Akon. Akon. Yeah. But <laughs> he's just. 
I actually think I DM'd him once when really? I was pissed. Yeah, like... Did he reply? No, of course he didn't. <laughs> I could be there right now if you oh, just check your DMs. Remind me one of his songs. Oh, no, don't be so silly. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love the balls, You go through that disco oh, I did, yeah. you'd love it. You would love it. It's basically like me at uni yeah yes. has he got any new ones out recently no he doesn't need them no he doesn't well he might he might he might actually have new ones out that we used to I just used to watch the music video music music yeah I see you down in a that is uni that is like pre that's so good who would be your mine would be Adele at my wedding oh no that would be that's romantic yeah that's like a John Legend vibe I don't think I'd band. Yeah. Like, did everyone dance to. That'd be nice. But like, I want like more of a party person. Yeah. Do you know who I booked tickets to, which I now can't go? Tate McRae. Oh, oh you can't I, go. We saw oh, no, the bridge. She was. She, she was. Because oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, I booked them and I was like, yeah, I can't wait. Oh my God, I'm going to go finally see her. And then I'm 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 in LA. I mean I can't oh, I can't sure. I'll probably see someone else. Yeah, well, yeah. She was the one we at the Brits. We yeah. were kind of like both jaws wide Honestly. open. She is so hot. So hot. She was giving Britney, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she oh, was. Her, she's just a very good dancer. Her. And a lot of people take the piss out of her because she sings like two words out of the song. But those two words she sings yeah, they're she nails. on par. Like they're on like in key, that like <laughs> oh, she just sounds great. And like you wow. know when they're just like moving around so yeah. much, the hair gets yeah. stuck to the lips, and it just looks so hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How old is she? She's younger she's than us. She's younger than us. She's like twenty two, three, so maybe. Cool. Wow. Yeah. The new film that's coming out that's based on a Harry Styles fan fiction. Yeah. Have you guys heard of this? No. no. The trailer looks so it's good. Cool. So it's called The Idea of You. It's yeah. with Anne Hathaway. So it's supposedly based on a Harry Styles fan fiction novel where. Anne Hathaway plays a mother, so she's yeah. like in her early. I don't 40s. even think she's a mother. I think she's just in her forties. I think no, I think she is because she brings her daughter to oh. a Coachella oh, yeah, style right. concert, and then she sort of like locks eyes with the guy. I can't right. remember what his name is in the thing, but it's, he's like yeah. a pop August, star. Aug- no, he's in the band August Moon, yeah. and then Which is anyway, the supposedly she, they fall in love, but she's got the child. I was I was thinking if my mum took me to Harry Styles <laughs> concert and then she got with Harry Styles, I'd be like, what the fuck? I'm yeah. Fuming. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like they like meet accidentally backstage yeah, or something okay. and then they like have this whirlwind romance and it's like very in the press and it's very like they go off on holiday and like it's very much like Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles I think I want it. Yeah, I, that, I feel like that's the But vibe. the way it's shot, I feel like it is going to be really good. Yeah, <laughs> we need a cinema group yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I've yeah, got, got coming films. up. I know, but I, like, I feel like I'm really loving... The like return of rom com vibes. Yes. I don't know yes. how funny this one's gonna. I don't know if it's rom com. No, it is giving rom com. Is it okay? Cool. Yeah. But I love. I like. I watched that anyone but you, which I know oh, we so spoke about loads. Like but I, I really haven't watched it. Yet, but I watched it for the first that time. That's Sydney Sweeney and yeah. Glenn Powell. Oh my god, I love. Oh it. yes, I haven't seen yeah, it. Such seen a good it. film. You'd like it. Yeah, it's good. Like it just was an easy watch. Yeah. I feel it's like happy. it looks like classic rom com. Classic. They were like really good. Like there's, it's one of those ones where like some bits are just like this is so stupid. Like obviously we're gonna get together on it. But like at the same time, it's just you just watch it. And it brought back Natasha Bening film. Yeah, she was number one for like two weeks. And she performed, didn't she? Did she perform at the Brits? Did she? No, she didn't. Where did she just perform? Some sure. some award show and I was like she's at the blank page before oh, I'm whispering <laughs> I know it's well good I don't know but that's cool that she yeah. performed mm. she's been she's been she's making comeback yeah I love that song I oh. really love that song I did well. wonder why everyone was obsessed with her again then I watched the film and I was like right yeah <laughs> there it is got it. <laughs> um, Mew but, Mew show yes the Mew Mew show it was so good have you guys seen it spring summer twenty four in Paris. No. I don't know if I've seen it, but potentially have You'd seen some it. clips, I think. It's so good. I was just... loving the... They were all walking down the runway with big handbags that yes. were, like, stuffed. Well, that brim. is just all... Like, the whole of Paris Fashion Week, every brand was doing that huge handheld mm. bags. Like, it's but such a trend. But everything was stuffed yeah, in yeah, it, yeah. which kind of represents my exact Yeah, vibe. literally, yeah. the vibes. <laughs> Um, it was quite preppy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very. It was just what very Mew Mew. I loved it. I loved the like necktie situations. Lil Sims was walking in it. Lil Sims was walking. Like, it was just who a really else cool was show. walking? Some other really cool people. Uh, Kristen Scott Thomas and mm-hmm. um, Gigi Hadid were walking. Oh yes, yeah. Gigi. She wore that big fur coat, and they did a um, like behind the scenes video at the show, being like, "What's your name?" and like, "Who? What's your favorite look?" And every single person said mine, obviously. And literally every <laughs> single like they did ten people, and they were all like. Hi, I'm Gigi Hadid, and obviously mine's like my favourite look. And I was like, is this planned? It yeah, must have yeah, been it planned. Must have been. But it didn't feel like it was. Really? Yeah. It's okay. good though. But yeah, sick show. Like really, I feel like Miu Miu is one of those brands that like for Gen Z especially, mm-hmm. they just mm-hmm. nail it. Mm-hmm. Like it's like so, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like preppy, but it's quite cool. And it's not like, it, it's the same every time. Like they really know what they're doing. 
in terms of like their signature look yeah. but it's like so fun and fresh so every cool. time. and Sydney Sweeney did you see her in the little Mew Mew yes, um, the little little hats. Hats. I saw that yeah. really cool really but cool. like it's all, also like I was in Zara the other day and I saw the little like they've done a little skirt mm-hmm. so oh. it's all over the heart you can do it yeah. affordably yeah. these days yeah. I mean I can't afford that Mew Mew price <laughs> yeah. no yeah. way <laughs> a girl can dream yeah. <laughs> so there's a trend we've seen on TikTok well, it's not really a trend, it was basically like a video someone's done and we were like, this is mm-hmm. so true, because we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. But it's like, basically she, she was like, you're a friendship that it's either you copy or you twin. I saw this this Have morning. You Did you? Yeah, and it's like, um, this is the kind of friendship where we go, oh my God, we match, not oh my God, she's copied me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and I was like, that is so true. It's just so the vibe. And so I think that's true. one of my like pet peeves in life. Yeah. Is when someone is like quite protective over like their things mm-hmm. and like their, like what they're wearing. If like, I am so that person. I think we all are, where it's like, oh my God, I love your thing. Like, where's it from? And then you're yeah. like, yeah, get it, get yeah. it. It's from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I bought it the other day. Oh, like, do you, you know where mine? Where mine? Yeah. Or like, I buy one for them. Yeah, I'm like, I just bought this because I love I it so think, much. And I think, I think yeah. when we were growing up and we were at school and we were at kids, that was quite copying was quite a thing because everyone, yes. you were discovering who you were. It was very much follow the crowd. And mm-hmm. I feel like now it shouldn't be taken as a negative. No. Ultimately, someone, you know, it's, it, they're inspired by you. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's like the biggest, uh, everyone always says to me, like, it's the biggest form of flattery. Exactly. Definitely. Like, people, it's like the biggest compliment if people, like, start matching yeah. Yeah. yeah but ultimately it's your your personality your vibe your aura mm. is what makes you unique so exactly yeah. no matter if someone's wearing the same outfit exactly you. because ultimately it's your personality that makes yeah. you you and you know yeah, i swear yeah, yeah. the other day we were shooting something and we wore the exact same outfit and we <laughs> really? look but we look completely different because like we're two different people we start it differently like there's so many i think as friends like you just can't be so protective over things like that. Like share. It's also more sustainable. Like share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'd never thought of it until I saw this. Yeah. When she says, yeah, copying rather than twinning. Or yeah. Blah, 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 yeah. Well. I just think it's nice. It's a nice thing to push out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to do a bit of careers chat now because we actually did a TikTok the other day, which got a lot of comments. I think people are really interested to hear like a deeper dive of careers and like how people got to where they are and I think you guys are obviously so good to talk about that and each of us obviously have such a different path and like what we do is so different obviously with you and content creation and you as well but entrepreneurship social media like journalism I think we all have something different to talk about so Judy how did you start what's been your career path since yeah. school really since school yeah okay, I'm gonna skip to maybe like interests or I guess yeah so I say I've at school level was maybe like very, very sporty. When it was coming to deciding whether I was gonna go to university or not, I was actually leaning towards not going. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my mum was basically like, look, I really think you should go, like just for the experience, Mm -hmm. like at a minimum, like just go for that. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm gonna go to uni, I'm certainly not going to make it hard if I'm going for the experience. So I thought I picked, so initially I think I wanted to do like international relations. Mm Then I changed and I was like, I'm going to do events management. Like, nice. I feel like I'm going to be good at that. Um, went to Bournemouth Uni. I actually really loved my course, if I'm being honest. I actually think at the time, people would kind of be like, oh, you just went to uni for like party planning or something like that. But to be honest, it's got very transferable skills. Like it is actually a degree. Oh yeah. Like coming yeah. out of it, it's very, not easy to get a job, but you can go into like marketing, advertising. You do cover yeah. finance a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And then like, it's transferable. You know, it is it's super yeah. transferable. So, but also, also life skills too. Oh, for yeah, sure. like any anything at uni, I feel like you just and it's super sociable. Anyway. Like I think with that course, you have to be able to network to a degree. So like sales skills you learn. So everybody on my course was super sociable. So that was really nice. So I finished uni and then I more or less went into corporate events so I did stick to kind of within it events, events marketing, events mm-hmm. sales. So I think I worked at Hilton for a year in the head office and that was event sales. And then I went into, oh, it was very random. I did like events marketing for like an like oil and gas conferences. Oh so yeah, super random. Did that for another year and a half maybe. And then that that's when I decided to quit. And it was more just, I wasn't really vibing with maybe management at the time. And, I just and thought, did you have like a creativity itch you wanted to spark? Yeah, I think at that point I'd already, before I'd got the job in, oil and gas conferences, I had started my Instagram Mm. page with a friend. So we were doing it together Mm -hmm. and it was very focused on kind of like the brunch scene in London. So I'd already had that built up. Obviously that's a really good skill if you're going into marketing anyway. So like within the interview, we were all kind of talking about that. Um, And even within the job, although like very not my vibe, you are really creative. Like you're making like all these documents. That's when I like discovered my love for Canva, like oh my obsessed God, yes. with it. Obsessed. <laughs> obsessed with Canva. 
And then I think when I left that, it was obviously because I wasn't really like enjoying like the kind of management structure. My parents then had a Thai restaurant and they like needed staff. And I thought, you know what? I can do this on the side, see how this goes. The restaurant I have in the evening, it's not really interrupting my day. And then it's just kind of picked up from there where I've ended up just doing mm. this full time now. Mm. So I don't know, I think it it has kind of tied into what I've learned at uni. I mean, I did my dissertation. Sorry, how weird are dissertations? I was thinking about I this can't even yeah. believe yeah. that we actually Like, did why was I writing 10,000 words on social I... media? And also who cares what I have? to say yeah. about it. But imagine everyone that has to read those. Like someone that but has like, to who, read dissertation yeah, after dissertation. God. And like, I was thinking about on? this the other day. So I actually chose a course where I didn't have to have written that's dissertation. Good. Oh, that's Smart. I was I chose a practical dissertation, which was I um, remember those, creating yeah. a documentary. Mm, um, and then we had to do cool. a write up, but it was only half. It was like a, I did film and television, so it was very practical. So when I got to the 5,000 words, I was like, thank God I didn't do a full 10,000. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I can't. I was like, where, where even is that? Like, what's that for? Where's He's that really, saying? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all those hours. That. What did it teach me? Pressure. Yeah. As if I had to do that to pass uni, it's just quite it a joke is, to me think back to it. But yeah, I think it has kind of, I kind of picked, I think because I picked events because I knew my personality would do well mm-hmm. with it. I have just naturally stayed kind of within that field. Mm-hmm. Like, even now, it's still kind of like marketing PR, yeah, like exactly. events wise. So it's definitely skills that I still use, like yeah. today. And what for you, like when you went full time content creation, what was like the deciding factor there of like, I can do this now? Is it like a financial thing? Was it like a, like, I don't know, like what kind of made you think you could take that step at that time? To be honest, if I did it again, I would have saved up more money really? before I'd gone yeah. full time because I, it was kind of more, wasn't really loving my job. Then I was like scrimping, like I was not really going out, couldn't really do much for like a good, probably six months to the first year. So I think if I did it again, I would probably, if you've got a full-time job and you're thinking about it between the two, I would at least wait until your content creation salary matches your full-time salary at least. Um, So that's something I definitely do differently. But I think that's where it kind of is different. I would say it's probably mostly financial, like in a normal situation, if I was earning the same as my full-time job, I would probably, once it was not getting manageable to do both, I would probably quit my full-time job and then do this. How long have you been self-employed for? I've been self-employed for like, oh God, it's got to be like five years now, but like I'm doing this full-time, maybe like two and a half. And that's the thing with freelancing is you can have a really good year and then the next year for no reason whatsoever, it can be really shit and like, Money is very stressful. Like Mm. it is the main stress of like most my problems, main cause. So that's where you need to be like very, I'd say the first year I was like really bad with money. If I had a good year, I'd like money was going out as fast as it was coming Mm. in. So only now have I been a bit more like, okay, let's split this into the 20, 30, 20, 30 like pots. But yeah, with freelancing, just that, you need to be prepared for that Mm. as well. It's like something you don't really know. Like even like doing your tax, all these things are like, I started a pension oh the other my week. God, yeah. Oh my god! Like, I didn't even know how to do that. <gasps> yeah, do you know this, this financial tax, literacy yeah. they oh, call it. They yeah. need that at school. Oh, they, they do. It's I'm really still learning on the go. Like awesome. I have an amazing accountant, and every time he says something to me, I'm like, "Could you just explain that for me?" Please? Yeah, yeah. I really don't. It's just it. like, why are we learning about trigonometry? Who oh, is that helping? So this is what we should be yeah. learning. Yeah. But Bronte, what have your for uh, those listening? How did Girls Who come about? You've now got a database of how many? I think. All together under the whole like gals who umbrella, or I'd say like 800,000. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Thank you. Incredible. So Thank t- you. just talk us through the journey. Cause I remember, it, I remember you touching on it previously mm. on a podcast, yeah. but we'd love to go in, into depth yeah. a bit more. So I went to Reading University and I studied film and television. I hated the first year. I literally like was so homesick, cried so much, wanted to go home, literally went home probably every time. I can weeks. relate, yeah. Aww. And I just felt so like uncool because it was meant to be like the best time of your life. And like, I was just calling my parents being like, can I come home? And like oh. booking train tickets so I'd know I have home to go to and like yeah. look forward to it. But then I like pushed through it and like second and third year, I absolutely loved them. I would say like with the best years of yeah. my life, like living with five girls, having the best time. And then the day I left university, I started Gals Who Graduate. Um, I started the day you left. Literally the day I left. Wow. I was like moving all my stuff home. I remember like my parents taking up my suitcases to my room and sitting on my bed and being like, oh my God, that's it. Like I've literally just been like put in this like tumble dryer of university and then like spat out. That's the a other great end. way yeah. to do yeah. yeah. It's suddenly like a whirlwind of like learning how to do like everything by yourself and then oh, you're back to where you started at home. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I literally sat on my bed and I called my sister like crying, being like, I need to talk about this. Like, why does no one talk about this feeling of leaving university? Like, it's so overwhelming. I don't have a job. I don't know what I want to do. And I just want to 
travel and live. I have no student loan <laughs> and I have no money. Um, so I started Gal to Graduate and it was a closed Facebook group. And I basically just said like, guys, is anyone else feeling like this? Like, mm. I, I feel so like alone and confused. At, like, am I meant to feel like this? So it starts as a bit of a brain dump. Just like a bit of an emotional, like, please tell me everyone else is feeling like yeah. this. And then I had like hundreds of girls reply being like, oh my God, thank God you're saying that. Did some research into it. There was only like one article on it from Cosmopolitan about post-university depression and post-university mm. blues. And I was like, why is no one talking about this? This yeah. is such like a big thing. Um, and then it kind of just spiraled from there. I went traveling. I went to Bali, did a med meditation retreat. Wow, I <laughs> love it. Um, and I stayed out there for a few months and realized that as I was out there, like, there was so many different paths you could take after university that I was so overwhelmed. So I just kept talking about it on Girls Who Graduate, growing that. We kept growing like a bigger, bigger like group of girls talking about it. Hosted my first event. Yeah, so what was the turning? Were you like, I need to get these girls in a room? Yes, kind of I was like, I think this needs to be in real life. Like yeah. it's such like, everyone's saying that they've like lost friends because everyone's moved mm -hmm. to different parts of the country after living at uni together. Everyone just needs like connection mm -hmm. and yeah. like in-person connection. So I hosted an event, I think it was like 70 girls um, and just like this little, I had to like save up for like, when I came back from traveling, I was like, save up for the deposit to put on the event venue oh. um and then i put on this event and then from there it kind of just kept growing and i think people were like realizing and like companies and brands were realizing that like we had this like group of girls that were all feeling the same and it was like a community and they were students and graduates and all of that and we can direct them yeah, yeah. and we can help them and we yeah. can so i started getting support through that and then we kind of helped with then we had gals who rent we started that which is like helping girls find housemates and all of that then we had gals who read gals who sweat and gals who date which Amazing. was, it kind of like what anyone wanted within the community I kind of made. I was yeah, like, yeah, if yeah, you're talking yeah. about dating, I'll make girls who date. If you're talking about sweating, I'll talk about girls who yeah. sweat. Um, and then girls who travel came into play. And I think that was like the turning point for me where I could like monetize it yeah. and start actually making it my full-time job mm -hmm. rather than just like my part-time like thing mm. on the side. Um, and then girls but who But I travel. think that's, the, the way you fostered a community first, mm. that authenticness of it mm. is what's so special to you because that came about naturally. It wasn't right. Like, I want to set up a business. I want to yeah. make money. Oh, yeah, How yeah. can I do that quickly? Just wait, yeah. exactly. quickest way possible. You you created that and then you were able to monetize it and yeah. move it. And I think it, it helps because it, the girls who helped me, like I've made so many friends through it and I've, I've like had such like a an amazing connection with so many girls that I think I never wanted to monetize it because I was like, oh no, this is like a little community. Yeah. Like, I don't want to make but this But ultimately, job. this is probably taking up your evenings all day. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's constant. It, it, you know, why yeah. not turn your passion into mm. yeah. something you can live and on? That, I feel like that's so important because even with, you know, if you're a content creator or someone who's starting a small business, I think that is sometimes people go into it with this thought of, I just want it. For this, yeah. I just want to be yeah. in oh, I just want to be money. Famous. I just I want money. to make money. How can exactly. I make money? Yeah. And or they go... see like all these communities online now that yeah. are like doing really well and they're like, I want to do that because yeah. that's doing that. And it's like, I always say to people like, it has to come from a place of like motivation through like emotion and like yeah. experience. Yeah. And like, there's a reason why you're Passion. doing it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but though now the Girls Who Travel has become my like full time like passion because I love traveling, I love being away, I love like yeah. sharing experiences with other people and like connecting girls together and like there is no better connection than like going traveling with mm -hmm. a new yeah, friend. Yeah. Like yeah. so, your role, ha I guess it's split across everything really. Mm. But what what's your role in? Everything. You know everything. I you know the marketing, the <laughs> everything. design. Yeah, amazing. Is it yeah. just you as well? Um, so I have um I have like girls from the community that help with like the admin. So like all okay. the Facebook groups have like hundreds of thousands of girls on now. So we have girls helping do all the admin on the Facebook yeah. groups. Um, I have one of my best friends who like saw girls who start with me and has like seen it grow and she like helps me do like the events partnerships and all of that. Because right. it's a um, lot. I mean, even yeah, you've got the most incredible design mm. on, on all your all Instagram pages and everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. that all takes time. And you do that yourself, don't yeah. you? That just like, so I have a girls who graduate um, social media team. Great. Oh, great. And they do all of that because like, I just couldn't do all of it. And, yeah, and I had advice that. from, um, she's the, well, Grace Andrews, so, uh, Stephen yeah, Bartlett. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I went for a coffee with her and she was like, look Bronte, the best advice I can give you is to like, outreach yeah. and put your money into like, outsourcing and like getting people in to help grow girls yeah, who yeah. and as soon as she said that I was like right and yeah. like I started paying for people to come in and help and that honestly has helped grow it so yeah. much because you can't do it all as much as you're no. more than capable it's, and like a company yeah. is called a company because it's a group of people yeah, exactly. like you can't grow a company by yourself so yeah. Yeah, that really that really helped getting people in and like whenever anyone asks for advice, I'm like, as soon as you have the money to use it on like getting people in that have expertise in areas that you yeah, might or, not. or hire people better yeah, than you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. you know what I mean. It's yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I can concentrate on growing girls who travel or focus on the event side exactly. or like like building the business. So. Mm -hmm. so day to day, what does your day to day, week to week look like? 
It depends. So I'm either out hosting a Girls Who Travel trip somewhere in the world, going to Costa Rica tomorrow to host ah, our Girls Who Travel. Yeah. Um, so either doing that or I'll like have meetings with brands and we're planning our second careers fair um, for the end of this year. So that's lots going on there. Creating content for Girls Who Travel, um, coming up with new event ideas, just basically like finding new ways to keep the community a community and like growing that. Brilliant. Yeah. Exciting, exciting. Yeah, it's fun. I love it. It's Aww. so, it's just like every day I'm just like, it gets better and better every day. I love it. Aww. Great. That's so good. And I guess I sat on the sofa, yeah. we're all quite a mix, but sat in mm. particularly for fashion and editorially, I know people will be listening, you know, being like, you've got the best job ever. How, how, what are your top tips? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, my like uni career, I suppose you could say, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of people were mm -hmm. surprised with when we did that TikTok, where like everyone in that TikTok had not done fashion at uni. But I think that's a really main point is don't feel like just because you haven't done it um, educationally that you can't get into mm -hmm. it. Because actually, and this is what I said on that TikTok, is experience is the most important thing. And I know people get really annoyed about that because it is really hard to get experience, to get internships. Also, it's a huge privilege to be able to do something unpaid. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, a lot of people can't do that. So my top advice and what I did as well was to do it yourself. If you can't do it somewhere else, if you can't get it in a company, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I started a blog. I was writing. I was writing about what I liked in fashion and, you know, stars on the red carpet or like whatever it was I was like I can't get in touch with someone yeah. else so I'm gonna do it myself and then eventually as you're applying for these internships and jobs you can show that on your CV rather than yeah. being like I love fashion but I've got nothing to show for it so it's almost like a portfolio exactly to go alongside yeah. your CV exactly. of all your skills so if you were a photographer you'd have a portfolio yeah. of photos yeah. in mm -hmm. the same way you'd have a portfolio of your writing or and it doesn't even have to just be writing people use their instagrams and you know there's that really good page fashion.com i think is what it's okay. called oh, right. and they basically it's no photos at all it's just blue squares and from every fashion show from every every like it's literally just text on squares of like so and so did this at this latest yes, fashion show the row didn't oh, allow phones like it's just very like factual yeah but okay. it's an entire instagram page That's just for that, that page, and like yeah. that kind of thing it's so easy if you're not someone who wants to like pose in an outfit yeah that's such a nice way to do it yourself. yeah that's a brilliant other way yeah, yeah it's true formatting your knowledge yeah. 100%. Canva. Canva. Yeah. 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 100%. use those tools Absolutely. yeah yeah um so yeah definitely show your work where you can the other thing is when you're applying for the jobs because i've received so many cvs and, and like emails the number one thing is people don't actually say like why they want to work there. Like mm. they'll say, I'm really good because of this, this and this, and I've got all this experience and all that, but they don't actually say why they personally would add to being where they are. That and is why. so surprising. Do you know what I mean? It's so, I know it's crazy. so crazy. But I guess crazy. otherwise it could have just been a copy and paste job. Exactly. Why did you yeah, yeah. to that employer? Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I used, to, which is so bad, when I was like cold emailing people, I did that. I would just copy yeah, and paste yeah. it. And now receiving it, I realize that people are doing that and it's so obvious. Yeah. So like, that's another thing, really tailor your cold emails. To and I would attach a video if you can, particularly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I feel is like, that 100%? I, I love feel that. like you get, well, I, you know, if, if you enter a room and you meet someone, you get a vibe straight yeah. away mm -hmm. and if you are someone that perhaps struggles to process things into a word document but you're amazing with people and you're yeah. so personable send them a video yeah 100%. and it stands out because you don't get videos from everyone and then you watch a video and you're like actually let's get them in front exactly. of you exactly yeah also i feel like at uni i was told like don't put your photo on your cv i yeah. do every single yeah. time and when i started doing it i got replies quicker because mm -hmm. it, it is like just a personal thing but like seeing a face mm -hmm. you do yeah. then put like what you're seeing there to a person yeah. and it does help i also think if you're if you're ever doing um i don't know say you've got a six month contract with 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 a firm or a three month or an internship or whatever and i do feel like I, it shouldn't be a thing now non-paid internships no, I, think. No. I think it's definitely not it, as, as um, much yeah, yeah i think no. most yeah. are like good that was but, quite rare um how you end an internship or a short mm. program mm -hmm. with a company is just as important as how you start mm -hmm. so yeah. you know if you've been in contact with multiple people at that firm send them a send them a fair yeah. email yeah. so you're top of the mind yeah. you know yeah. i feel like that's super key 100 percent. we actually did a feature on site um, on our new careers hub, which is called Futures. Um, and it was all about how to like make the best impression you can in an internship. And that was definitely one of the points. It's like when you leave, follow up, say mm -hmm. this and that. When you're there, do this and that. Like definitely read that if you want a few more tips on yeah. to stand out. 100%. Yeah. Touching on the experience thing as well. I remember that a really appealing thing about my course mm -hmm. was... I remember I think Bo I went to Bournemouth, I can't remember if I said that before, but they're like quite big on like the tourism kind of industry. Mm -hmm. So covering like events, marketing, advertising. And they always did. So my course is a four year course, the third year being a placement. Mm, same. And I honestly think 
if there is like, if you have that option, it's so beneficial. Cause the amount of people that I know doing like three year courses and they come out and then they really struggle mm. yeah. to get a job cause they don't have that experience. It's like so much like stress relief when you can leave and be like, oh, I've already had like yeah. one year. So exactly. I, remember, I think I did mine in corporate, which is maybe also why I ended up going into more corporate jobs after. But I remember doing one year at like Siemens. Do you remember yeah, the like, yeah, tech yeah. company? Mm-hmm. So I worked in like their event space and also it was paid. So it's actually quite nice yeah. to like, I don't yeah. need that year as also, well. Also I think as just in terms of, I don't know if it was just me, but my the way I matured, I could have done with an extra year mm-hmm. in placement yeah. and even, yeah. You know, coming back, I think if I had done a year in placement, I think I would have been more mature in my third and final year yeah. and probably come with it, come at, come with a better mindset for my dissertation. 100%. So. 100%. Because it is just that, like, step into the real world after yeah. you've yeah. been in uni. Like, I honestly was going to say the same. Like, if you can do one, do one. Because yeah. it's just another thing in your CV as well that you can take off all of these skills that you've done physically and, again, you get paid. Yeah. Um, but also, I think it's just that when you then leave uni you can either go back to that place and be like, yeah. hey, like I was there yeah, for a whole year, this is everything I did. Like, would you take me back for, you know, now that I finished uni or just use it to go get somewhere else? Yeah, it's brilliant. Like it's such a, such a good thing to do. Um, but days, obviously you work in social and marketing. What are your tips for anyone who's looking to get into that? I feel like when I first started, it wasn't as big as it is now. And I feel mm-hmm. like most people I speak to, you know, that's social marketing is what they want to go into. My top tip would be to find out what marketing is it, analytical is it social is it email is it there are so many different types of marketing and if you can hone in on one that really interests you then become genned up in that I feel like the industry changes so much each week and just being up to date with the industry I use things like ad week marketing week the later blog is really good the tiktok creator studio is brilliant just be you know sort of be a sponge and Mm -hmm. soak up as much information as you can really yeah and that actually reminds me like a lot of people also say I really want to work in fashion and it's like do you know there are so many things yeah you could do design you could do social you could do marketing you could be a journalist you could be like a PR like there are so many things you could do in that so before you start anything is think about what you are good at and what you want to get into because that's my thing like when I was at uni I I knew I loved fashion but I didn't know what I wanted to do so I did business and and marketing thinking I go into PR then I did PR and I was like I like it, but I want to be on the other side of this. And that's how I realized that I really want to be a journalist and go into that side. So I do think also know what you want to do, but I think the experiences, even if they're not quite right at the time, they'll teach you what you really want to get into. So yeah. Um, Any other tips for social? No, I What's something like when you see a CV, you're like, oh, that stands out to me. I think, I guess I'm looking at just a work ethic as a whole, you know, it's not that you've tailored your CV to the fashion industry or to, Mm -hmm. you know, the social media industry. It's just whether you have been committed to, you know, a job for a long period of time, you've built up skills across multiple areas of the business. Mm -hmm. That, that to me is what, is what stands out. What I was going to say, especially with social, with marketing, like, like you were saying, it's like different, but with social, I think people underestimate like how much work it is. Like with social, it is relentless on top of the fact that it's just constant 24 seven, like it's actually mental that you were doing it like yeah, by yourself your for yeah. so long. Like it's so crazy. Whereas obviously if you were going to like what I did before, which was like events marketing, it's not at the same level at all. It's like, it takes a certain type of personality to be good at mm. different things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I get that when you yeah. have to look for someone who is really just like, it has to really be your passion. Yeah. I think if you want to yeah. do social, otherwise it will just eat you up alive basically. Yeah. <laughs> there was a recent article that Gen Z's are the sort of stressors yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. And I I think that personally, I've, I've got sort of mixed reviews on this, but firstly, I do believe that Gen Z's feel the need because of the cost of living yeah. to have a side hustle. And there is a, mm-hmm. there is a pressure to, you know, shit, the, the average salaries aren't matching the cost no. of living. So therefore we need to find another way to get income. That that leads to extra hours, that leads to burnout, that leads yeah. to not being able to switch switch off, wind down. But I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah. I know people say, oh, Gen Z's are lazy. I but can just do, do not, I yeah. just do, I've never understood that. Cause I think that I, Gen Z's out of all generations are like the ones that are grinding. But I think yeah. some have too many boundaries. R- really? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I don't think some know what good mm. graph. I understand yeah. perhaps I just have, should have, shouldn't have given as much. I don't know. Yeah, what, I, I know, you know what, what you I'm mean? trying to explain. Because I think it's really good that they set their boundaries because I get it, you are paid to be in this job nine to five. And if that's what you want to do, that's also fine. But it's also unrealistic to, to think that your employer 
is going to maybe prioritize you for the next promotion. Mm. If there is somebody that maybe not, I'm not saying you should be staying over time mm. two hours every day. Cause then that's a time management thing. Like yeah. you're, that's something you need to fix. But every now and again, like around events, like especially with our jobs, there will be times where you have to do extra hours. And if you are really fixed on those boundaries, mm. that's fair and that's fine. But then you just can't be maybe shocked if other people who are maybe yeah. doing a bit of extra mm. overtime to get, get stuff done, then maybe get promoted a bit faster than yeah. you. And I think it's just that. I do it's, think it's a bit of a, because also yeah. this article was saying that, yeah, we're, Gen Z are the generation that are getting signed off sick from work the most because of burnout. Because yeah. They, yeah. yeah. See, it's I crazy. hear the opposite. I hear that we're really lazy and like, if we get asked to do something, we're very quick to say no. Yes, which mm-hmm. I do. It doesn't fit us. Yeah. And we're just like, no, 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 it's all right, we're better off. But like, and like we, although I also feel like there's also this show for working overtime and like getting all these achievements yeah. and working. Yeah. And it's like, take a picture of your laptop at like 9 p.m. Yeah. on a Friday. I'm like, yeah. just go yeah. to sleep. I know. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, say, take it be, you know, there are some people that arrive bang on the dot of when work starts and they leave bang on the dot but they get everything done and they are so time Mm -hmm. efficient and they don't waste a moment in their day and great that's amazing but then there are probably some people that just sit there for the sake of sitting there Mm -hmm. and that is not good I think that's the balance I think you can have your boundaries you can work the hours you're contracted to work because that's all you're getting yeah yeah don't, don't do more than that but then when you're there, make a fucking impression, like do it well, like yeah. show mm-hmm. show up. I, I think, think it's, that's the I difference. think Gen Z's have started to, I think this this sort of rep that we, that mm. Gen Z's are getting is because they push back more than millennials yeah. Yeah. ever did. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, cost of living wasn't as much of a thing for no. the millennials. We value our time. We know that perhaps mm-hmm. we could make X amount, but doing something, yeah. doing something else. So it's it's difficult. But I, I think, also think social yeah. media comes yeah. into a big play because you see everyone with these side hustles, these passion projects, all of this, and you're like, oh, I need to be doing that. Yeah. So people start doing it and then get burnt out because they're working mm-hmm. a full time job plus trying to balance totally. this. So I don't plus trying that. to run ten miles before work and yeah. get yeah. 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 But then that's why I think older generations see Gen Z as not doing as much because I think the like pathways are not as linear as they used yeah. to be. I think oh, yeah. if, if you're not in a nine to five job, then you're not actually Right, that's what people think, I think. But actually, being yeah. an influencer or being like in music or doing something else, it's still just as like demanding. Like you're, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's also a slightly like false. Narrative. I always say this because my partner is also he freelances, and I know that like at the moment he's at home. So then I know that his dad definitely sometimes feels like he's not like. I was like, mm. oh, I'm still working. He's like, what are you even doing? Like, can't yeah, understand. Right. But I was like, but he wouldn't think that if you were leaving the house yeah. to go to work and then you were coming back at 7 p.m. To them, that would be like, okay, yeah, he's going to work. But because yeah. you're like working from home and you're not leaving like one room or the office or whatever, in his head, he's like, okay, yeah, but like, do you know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. they almost don't take yeah. it seriously. Totally. But it's no different. Like if no. you were leaving, you'd be doing exactly the same thing yeah. in the office. You'd be sitting at a desk. You wouldn't be moved. Like, yeah. it's yeah. exactly the but same. I, I, I think you're right. Social media is probably what has mm, yeah. sort of definitely. Caught, but also this. I think it's, there's a slightly negative, obviously there's lots of negative things with this, but one thing is that I think people, because of social media, think that their job has to be their dream job. Yeah, and yeah. that what oh, yeah. you're doing and what you're showing about your job has to be like, I'm just living my best life, living this amazing like job. Yeah. And it's like, actually some people can just work, to yeah. work, to make yeah, money. To, I like, think the, the majority of people, yeah. We're, I think we're very lucky and we're in very small minority that we wake up every day and we are, we are excited by our jobs and mm. we are oh, passionate 100%. and we, but you know, you have people that also probably absolutely love the product they're selling. They mm-hmm. really believe in it. But then you have, you know, you have a mundane product, but the commission might be amazing. Yeah, and, and you're living yeah. an amazing life and going on great holidays yeah, and like 100%. whatever your job's your job, you get your money and then you go on a great holiday. Yeah. Like, I think you don't compare yourself to other people no. in the sense that like, you shouldn't have to feel like mm. your job's the dream job and mm. you've wanted to do it since the day you were born. Oh, and, yeah. like, whenever people yeah. say like, what career advice would you give? I'm like, you're not put on this earth to find your dream job. Exactly. So Society has like made us think that like, we all have to find this dream job. Yeah. And, like, What's your dream job? What's your dream job? Like when you come out of uni, it's like, yeah. but there isn't a dream job, job because no. yeah, we wouldn't be in a job if it, no. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I just feel like it's like, don't feel the like society pressure of finding this dream job. Like, yeah. like mm. you said, you can literally go to a job, have an amazing, like enjoy it, but it's not, it might not be your dream job no. and go on these amazing holidays, have these amazing time off. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be like this dream career exactly. and you yeah. don't have to feel like a pressure. Like I feel like my friends are always like, I don't know what my dream job is. Like mm, that's okay. Awesome. And I'm like, so, I don't yeah. actually know. So I think that's like a big thing. Yeah. That you don't, you're not put yeah. on the side yeah. to find that. Yeah. Oh, that was a good chat. I feel like we could go on about that for a while. But yeah, we'll, we'll have to do another 
round of this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But before we go, we're going to do a very quick fire products and things we're loving. Hey, girls, what are you loving? Right now. Guys, I'm obsessed with bubble skirts. Have you seen them? Okay. I've seen them everywhere and I, I've gone into every shop and they're everywhere. Um, I just got a really cute one from Stradivarius. Mm. Really like, I think it was like $9.99. What colour? I love that, white. Okay. And just with like a baggy jumper and yeah. chunky boots. I'm waiting for it to get a bit warmer. Mm. But I just love them. I think they're just so cute and girly and like feminine. I love that. Love. Really fun. Mm. Do you think? Okay, I'm going to fire through these. So... <laughs> TV shows, just binge The Gentleman on Netflix. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm three episodes one. in. Really, three really episodes good. In. Basically same vibe, Kin on BBC. I'm loving my oh, yes. little like drug lord gangster vibes <laughs> at the moment. Both of those are really good. I haven't finished season two of Kin. Um, restaurants, I really love Chucks. I don't know when this is going out, so they're only here for two weeks, so it might not still be there. Um, or Yeye's, which is like noodles and dumplings mm. in Spitalfields area. You oh. know, um, in Spitalfields, they do those like soup dumplings. Yeah. I think these are better. Oh. And it's around the court, but it's very, very good. I trust your rep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then for products, Anthropology are doing really cute scrunchies. Oh, oh. my God. Yeah. Got I've a leopard print one. Oh. <laughs> and then there's like cute little pink and khaki ones with like bows on the scrunchies. So cute. Very That's cute. Good. Yeah. And then I was going to say like flats. I'm not a flat girly i now have three pairs of like dolly pump flats mm. so i got the h&m ones like the alaya dupes and then asos have a really cute like studded pair and like a like faux leather or a leather pair that i got from there so they're doing really good dupes i'm really glad they are because if anyone thinks i'm paying 700 pounds <laughs> yeah no absolutely <laughs> not pumps Painful. what also in this weather they get ruined that's yeah. insane yeah. i thought they were like 200 and i looked them up and i was like Right, okay, Ridiculous so we are all party. Delulu. Yeah. Like, this is fucking mental. Who's paying for these? What about you, Dave? I have just watched the Kid Leroy doc on Amazon Prime. Oh, I really want to see that. Fascinating. Oh. He, can I just say, so he's from Australia. Yeah. He has achieved more than most people have achieved in a, as, a, as a music career. He's very by young. The, by yeah. the age of 20. Like, he wow. is so inspiring. That's he funny. really reminds me of, like, a mini Post Malone yeah. slash yeah. future yeah. kind of. yeah, yeah. And he's prodigy. Good friends with Justin. He's good friends with Justin. Justin appeared on the documentary, but also it does make me sad what these young mm. musicians go through. And, you know, I guess he was navigating transition of teens, mm. which for a guy is a hard thing anyway, yeah. but being thrusted into limelight and dealing with back to back shows and people wanting every single part of you yeah. and being pulled in every direction. Um, he also went through a lot of grief in his early right. teens. He lost two very close friends, which is so sad. So I don't know. It's quite. It is quite a sad documentary, but also um, it's sort of transitioned with these like cartoons, um, oh, that's cool. which is really cool. I just love it when a, a documentary is just mm. a bit different like that. So it's really worth a watch, and I just think he has got a huge future ahead of him. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely worth a watch. I'm also loving these Missima mm -hmm. Gold. Um, everyday yeah, earrings. Cute. Satna's wearing the silver, which That's I also so love. love. But if you're just looking for an everyday hoop that yeah. isn't too heavy, loving them. <gasps> yeah, they're really they're nice. So nice. Satna, what are you loving? I so I saw Dune finally. Dune two. <gasps> oh yes. my god! Oh, I'm I'm stuck stuck in. And I see really it. love it. I'm obviously not going to say too much about it because I feel like people probably haven't all seen it yet. But I really, really loved it. I think it kind of made sense of why the first one didn't feel as like it hit because it was like leading up to this mm, one. Yeah. And now when you watch this one, so much happens. <gasps> yes. But like in the best way. And the actors are all amazing. The costume, like everything. So yeah, definitely if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Um, the other thing I'm loving is a new... So I'm like very specific about my hair products. Like very specific. And Davines is usually like my go-to for everything. I still love them so much. But I've just started trying this L'Oreal, like L'Oreal's new shampoo. It's like a glycolic acid shampoo. Ooh. Like a gloss. Yeah. So good. Obviously super affordable because it's mm -hmm. yeah. in the drugstore. And yeah, it just makes your hair super shiny. Your it hair smells amazing. Like Thank you. Gloss. It just feels, <laughs> yeah. it just oh, feels you. like so oh my like, God. oh my God, honestly, it's so good. Wow. And they have like an actual gloss thing you can put in your hair. So okay, there's a shampoo nice. conditioner, but you can put the gloss in and there's like a serum. So it's a whole range. I do trust your Rex because you are very specific. Yeah, yeah. very specific. And it's, it just smells so good. And it's sulfate free, which is my number one thing yeah. with drugstore shampoos because a lot of them mm -hmm. have sulfates. This one doesn't. So yeah, those are my love. Rex. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, guys, it's been such a fun pod. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming Thanks in. Thanks for guys. having me. And have an amazing trip in Costa Rica. Thank you. Yes. I can't wait for sun. Oh, Please. Yes. Yes. Well, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. 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 Bye.